Hey YouTube, guess who the flip is back? And I'm not talking about butt plug Randy. That dude is serving 20 to life for the shit he pulled, or rather, pushed. Butt plug Randy. I would say he could kiss my ass, but frankly, I kind of want him as far away from my rear end as possible. But let's leave butt plug Randy in the past where he belongs. Um, I know I've started this video off in a pretty predictable way, but here is a right turn for you guys. Um, Dark Souls is a big comfort game for me. Now, if Dark Souls is a game that you've really only heard about but never played before, that might seem like kind of a weird thing to say because it's a very notoriously difficult and punishing game. Aren't comfort games supposed to help you kind of escape whatever shit you're dealing with and be, you know, comforting? Comfort games shouldn't break you and beat you down. I mean, they should beat you off, right? <laughs> That's like coming home from your shift at the fucking sardine factory and instead of finding your smoking hot, sexy wife with dinner ready and a glass of red wine, it's butt plug Randy, a tube of lube and one latex glove. Why can't butt plug Randy leave me alone? I'm a very nostalgic person and I'm a sucker for anything with giant swords and casting spells and dragons and just that whole kind of shebang. So that probably plays a part in why Dark Souls makes me feel so at home. But I think that there's more to it than just that. In Dark Souls, the space between the skill floor and the skill ceiling is as wide as... Why? Hey, voiceover Henry, yeah. should I make another butt plug Randy joke here? Yeah. I mean, I said as wide as, you know, there's kind of a lot. Dude, who but, is butt plug Randy? Who is butt plug Randy? Who is that? Combat in Dark Souls is brutal. You can get f***ed up if you don't know what you're doing and you don't play your cards right. But if you're skilled and experienced and know what you're doing, you can breeze through encounters that would introduce new players to a world of hurt. That world of hurt is something that the game forces you to claw your way out of, enemy by enemy, level by level. And it's because you're forced to rely on nothing but yourself. There's no difficulty sliders here, just an obstacle in your will to overcome it, that it feels all the more earned when the XP you get from killing that boss lets you wield this giant badass laser sword that shoots laser beams and lets you one hit those weak tamby pamby zombies. <laughs> That's what my grandma calls me. <laughs> A fucking namby pamby. Cause when I stay at her house and don't want to eat her boiled cabbage sauerkraut soup, apparently I'm just a namby pamby pussy. You know, she got a fucking house elf. My own grandma replaced me with the house elf because I I wasn't good enough at doing chores. <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm just, I'm a little upset that you give Dobby all the treats that you used to give me. Okay, that's just, that just pisses me off a little bit. I'm sorry, Grandma. I, <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> Dark Souls is a game that I've played in many states of mind throughout the past four years of my life. Looking for another world to travel to over quarantine. On sick days, home from school with the mountain of used tissues on my desk. Heartbroken by teen love, wanting to return to that same world that was <laughs> so magical all those years ago. But magic? Dobby knows magic, sir. Let Dobby out the cage. Dobby will show you a magic trick. Shut yes. the fuck up, Dobby. No! I think that Dark Souls difficulty is a big part of why it works so well as a comfort game for me. You know that your success is based on your skill and knowledge of the game alone, and it provides a sandbox and a shovel for you to build up your own walls and towers. And it provides meaning to how high you've built, knowing that gravity is always pulling, trying to tear it all down. And it does. I mean, no matter how many times I replay this game, I still get freaked in 17 different holes that I didn't even know I had. And that is saying something, considering my past encounters with butt plug fucking Randy. But, well, that's kind of the beauty of it. <laughs> you learn a thing or two about yourself. The higher up you climb in the game's world, up through the undead burg and undead parish, the more you die, the harder and darker the game gets dodging the dangers of Sen's fortress. The more gravity pulls you down and you emerge out onto the rooftops and Dark Souls gives you something to fight for. Brilliant views of the sun, beams shining through the clouds, cascading down onto the earth, far, far below. Moments like this are common in Dark Souls. They're easy to miss though. The game rarely draws too much attention to them, but it's just enough to allow you to stop for a moment or three 
and take in the joys of the fading age of fire. Even underground, the sun's reach isn't far behind. You spend half your time in the game crawling through some pitch black tomb or cave or abyss, half blind like a six year old at Arby's without his skibbity toilet. He's right behind me, isn't he? But even in the deepest parts of the depths, in the New Londo ruins, in the catacombs, sunlight can be found poking through the earth, reaching you against all odds. Dark Souls loves the light. Link the fire, the world itself trying to convince you. This won't be the place where you give up. Look at what you're fighting for. Dark Souls tells you that despite how many times you've died, despite how impossible the game may seem, despite the fact that you, despite the fact that your grandma replaced you with the house elf, despite it all, there's still the warmth of the sun. The sunlight throughout the environments in Dark Souls works as more than just eye candy. You spend the game journeying around the kingdom with the ultimate goal of sacrificing yourself, using your own body as kindling to prolong this age of fire, of sunlight. Reality itself is crumbling as the first flame fades and the sunlight, the beacon of what you're fighting for, acts as your guide, never too far away when you need it. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Even changing its position just to look as aesthetically pleasing as possible for your viewing pleasure to give you a little burst of motivation when you need it. Toby's magic what? <laughs> Toby is free at last! <laughs> at the end of the game, you're presented with an option. You can sacrifice yourself, fulfilling your duty as the chosen undead and prolonging the age of fire for a little more time, or you could just go like leave <laughs> like get the fuck out <laughs> like <laughs> the door is right there jared okay nobody wants you here we can all tell you keep scratching your nuts dude like every 15 seconds you are not being discreet bro get the fuck out itchy balls just hit the road you scratch scrote and let the age of fire fade after how much I've talked about sunlight and the age of fire in this video, you might be surprised to hear that this is actually the option that resonates with me the most. <laughs> really man, that's that's crazy. I really give a shit. I really give he a shit. He has never said something constructive. Ever. Nobody knows what'll happen when the first flame goes out. All the world has ever known is the age of fire and how good has it been? I mean, there's demons everywhere, and an undead curse, and so many gross fucking things around every corner, and everybody's going insane or depressed, and it's all because we're in this supposedly glorious age of fire, but maybe it isn't all that it's chalked up to be. And Orlando is the place in Dark Souls most drenched in sunlight, frozen in an eternal, ethereal sunset, but the glow of the light obscures a darker truth. Fighting your way through the silver nights and being his ass looking demons, you eventually reach Guinevere, Princess of Sunlight, but attacking her reveals that it's all an illusion. She dissolves into thin air, and the golden glow of the sun fades. In Orlando, City of the Gods is cold, dark, and desolate. If a place as magnificent as In Orlando is just a front, then what does it say for the rest of the world in Dark Souls? How good is the Age of Fire, really? Is the sun in other places also just a cheap mirage? Is this something worth sacrificing your life to prolong? I mean, what could be next? It's anybody's guess. Maybe it's something not so dark. Maybe a world where my asshole doesn't hurt right now. <laughs> Maybe it's a world without Buffalo Grandy. Maybe it is. Yeah. Now thou shalt go forth, chosen undead. May thou be one with the sunlight forevermore. Uh, shout out you, the viewer, for making it this far in the video. Um, if you're still watching right now, that means you probably enjoyed what you saw. So maybe consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Uh, it would really help me out. But I think I can hear Dobby causing some fucking mischief somewhere in my house. So I'm gonna go 
kind of deal with that problem. But uh, thanks for watching. Kisses and smooches.